Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So the topic on proofs in Indian mathematics, so is covered in three parts. So the first part was covered by Professor Srinivas and the second part of uh, proofs in Indian mathematics. So I will be primarily discussing two topics. One is finding the volume of a sphere. So how did Indians do? So this is one uh, topic which we will be discussing and then this will be followed by an interesting discussion on uh, cyclic quadrilaterals. So, cyclic quadrilaterals has been uh, dealt with in great detail by Jyestha Deva in his Yukti Bhasha. In fact, the both the proofs that I am going to present so are from Yukti Bhasha. Before starting the discussion, I would just like to give you an overview wherein I want to introduce these terms which are not that familiar. So, one is this Jya Samvarga Nyaya. So, the term Jya has been introduced as sign. Okay. So, Samvarga is product. So, this has been repeatedly said Jya Samvarga product of signs. Okay. So, this is one thing which we will be discussing. This is one theorem and uh, Jya Varga Antara Nyaya. Jya Varga is sin square kind of a thing. So, antara is difference. So, jya varga antara nyaya refers to, so the difference in the squares of signs. So, basically, so there will be two important formulae that will be presented and based on those formulae, some very interesting results have been presented in cyclic quadrilateral. The results have been primarily to express the diagonals in terms of the sides as well as the area in terms of the sides. These are very interesting as you will see. So, I will move on to the first topic volume of a sphere. So, to find out the volume of a sphere, so what is done is primarily a sphere is taken and then it is sliced into n bits. Okay. So, you just think of the sphere of diameter d. So, what is done is you slice it into n bits of equal thickness and uh, so this is the first thing that one needs to conceive of. So, conceive of a sphere which is divided into n parts of equal thickness n slices. Then the idea is to find out, so the volume of this slice first, so, so that is what is done. Then you just find out what is going to be the sum of this. So, this is the general principle that is adopted, fine. So, sum up these elementary volumes of these slices which will give the volume of the sphere. So, this is the overall procedure. So, how do they do that? So, for doing so, so you conceive of one slice and then divide that slice into half. So, then you just cut it into this kind of almost similar triangular kind of a thing, fine. They are unfolded. So, you will have one piece like this and you will have the other piece. So, just insert them and what you will be getting is primarily a rectangular kind of a figure. So, if the number of bits into which it is sliced is large, then you will almost have a rectangle. So, what is the area of this rectangular piece? So, area is so half times the circumference into r prime. So, where r prime refers to this radius. So, why did I write uh, r prime? So, in fact, uh, this, uh, this slice is of if it is of significant thickness. So, then so you have to take the sort of average. So, of the top and bottom. So, and then that will be the r kind of a thing. Okay. So, that is why I am just to obtain the elementary volume, so all that that needs to be done is, so this c by r, so 
so always they express so c by r is basically today we know as 2 pi kind of a thing okay so if you want to relate so you can keep it that way but this is how they have been expressing so consider see for instance uh, maybe in the next slide see so you have chopped off so let us see that this this is what is the radius of the slice okay so that is what i am referring to as bj i use the notation b because they use bhuja so if you uh, think of this so ob is karna and pb is bhuja so if you consider the triangle opb so then pb is bhuja so that is basically the r sign so the circumference of this slice is c by r times this bhuja and the area of this slice so is half times so then into bj is this clear so this is what the area of the slice is then the elementary volume is obtained by simply multiplying this area into the thickness of it so then what do you do so you have to just sum up these elementary volumes so that gives you so half of c by r into b j square into delta so you have to find out b j square in terms of radius so that is all the problem is so if you look at this right hand side of this equation so all that you have is so c by r times delta so delta is 2r by n so that is the thickness so you have to find an expression for b j square so if b j is also expressed in terms of r then you will get an expression for volume so in terms of r so for this we invoke this jashara uh, samvarga nyaya which we discussed while we discussed aryabhatiya so basically we need to get an expression for b j so recall this nyaya vritte shara samvarga ardhajya varga sakalu dhanusho ho so this ae is b this bhuja so ae square is equal to de into eb fine so let us see this what is this eb so eb so in this problem so since you have sort of sliced into various segments of equal thickness delta so if this is the jth slice from this point n so what you would have is np so basically what you get is so this pb square is np times sp right np plus sp so this basically turns out to be 2r so that is fine so the other part np if you look at so np is equal to j times this and sp is n minus j times the slice so when you want to sum up so this as well as this will add up to the same right so you here you will have so np square is 1 times delta plus 2 times so you will have 2 times delta plus 3 times delta so the whole square and here it will be so n minus 1 n minus 2 so basically they sum up to one and the same thing so so what we have is so this bj square so n times 2r square so if you look at this expression so you are going to sum up from j is equal to 1 to n no no that i am just saying so if you have to think of this r prime so you have to just take the mean value so that is why i just said so so if you think of infinitesimal sort of thickness then i think we can just use it as r so here so here uh, so bj square is made up of two parts so n times 2r square so since i is 1 to n so you will have n times this contribution so n times 2r square and uh, this basically reduces to 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus n square fine this sum in fact may be uh, will be discussed by professor Srinivas in his third lecture so Kerala mathematicians have discussed so the sum of all powers of n uh, for uh, large n 
So, in fact, this is a very very important result in, in arriving at the infinite series for various expressions, trigonometric functions as well as for pi. So, this uh, summation of 1 square plus 2 square plus uh, and so on n square. So, for large n, so it goes as n cube by 3. So, this result was known and once you plug it in, so what you will have is 4 r cube minus 8 by 3 r cube and this will turn out to be 4 by 3 pi r cube as we understand today. So, there is a very neat proof which has been presented by <coughs> Jeshtha Deva in his Yukti Bhasha. So, now I move on to the topic of cyclic quadrilateral. So, before we take up the cyclic quadrilateral and the results, some interesting results. So, I want to present certain important theorems, so which will be frequently invoked in trying to prove the result. <coughs> So, these results are general results which have to do with the chords in circle. So, it has nothing to do with specifically the cyclic quadrilateral. So, any chord you just consider in circle. So, these results will be applicable and uh, any segment obviously in a cyclic quadrilateral is going to be conceived as a chord. So, that is why we are interested in the results in chord. So, why are we interested? So, this is precisely the reason. So, since all the four segments are going to be cards, so if you know these results, then you can so easily invoke these results to prove certain things with reference to cyclic quadrilateral. Uh, so, in this figure, so conceive of this triangle A D C. So, this simple relation a d square minus d c square is equal to a m square minus m c square. So, this is obtained by dropping this perpendicular d m in this triangle a d c. So, d m square, so is basically a d square minus a m square and this is also equal to c d square minus m c square. So, and therefore, you get this result straight away equation 6. Fine. So, in other words, so if you had seen uh, earlier uh, the discussion on Abadhantara, so basically this uh, two segments A m and M c are called as Abadhas. So, what you have is, so this, this A d and D c are jas, fine, A d and D c are two jas, so cards, full cards. So, a d square minus d c square is jya vargantara. So, the difference in the vargas of the jyas, so that is equal to the difference in the abadhas. Okay. So, this is one result which will be used in various applications. So, uh, that is why I just wanted to mention this. So, this result has to be kept in mind. So, this has nothing to do with the cyclic quadrilateral, this has to do with the cards. Okay. So, the difference in the uh, jas was square of the jas is equal to the difference in the abadhas. Now, we are going to rewrite this equation to arrive at some other interesting result. So, a d square minus d c square is a m square minus m c square. So, you write it this way. So, a m plus m c into a m minus m c. This a m plus m c is j of the sum of the two arcs. Now, we will speak in terms of arcs. So, this a d and d c are two arcs. So, you can this is card and if you move this way this is arc. So, I use the notation c for arc because chapa understand. So, a d the arc a d is, is denoted by c 1 and arc d c is denoted by c 2. So, this a d is j. So, we use the notation j for that. So, a d square minus d c square is j 1 square minus j 2 square. So, this is a very important result which we will be very frequently using in a derivation which we will be dealing with soon. So, the difference in the squares of the jas is equal to, so c 1 plus c 2 
So, A m plus m c. So, j of c 1 plus c 2 into j of c 1 minus c 2. So, this is a result. So, and this we refer to as Chapadvaya Yoga Vyoga Jya Samvargaha. So, the difference in the squares of the jaws. So, is equal to so j of c 1 plus c 2 into j of c 1 minus c 2. So, this uh, another result, so which actually uh, can also be shown is the following. This is say the previous result has to do with the j varga. Okay. So, j varga antara. So, this result is jya samvarga. So, this is product of two jyas. So, these jyas will basically form the segments of the cyclic quadrilateral. So, that is why we have this results in place. So, before we move on to this. So, this uh, of course, one can prove this. So, this is not very difficult to see, so, but I will skip the proof of this, but you can uh, see that. So, in some sense, so this is sort of related to this itself, you can see that see ja product of jas, okay. so is ja square difference and here also what we do is, so ja varga and if time permits maybe I will just prove this towards the end. So, this is uh, ja varga antara. So, the difference in the squares of the two jas. So, product of j 1 j 2 is this result. So, jya samvarga. So, is so this chapad dvaya c 1 plus c 2 divided by 2 and c 1 minus c 2. See in fact, uh, so these results might have been taught even in schools. So, you can see that they are very close to the results which we generally study. So, sin of c d c plus d by 2 and c minus d by 2 right. So, sin square c minus sin square d. So, this is what this. So, this is what it is done. So, this is a standard result. So, which is very important. So, which we will be making use of in trying to prove some other interesting results for getting the expression for the diagonals in terms of the sides and so on. So, these are the two results, so which are well known in some other um, terminology as we. So, here basically j is the sign and chapa is, so we use theta and here they use chapa arc, arc lengths. Okay. So, that is the difference. So, these are two known results. So, from this result an interesting uh, way to obtain sign table has also been presented by Shankara Variyar in his commentary on Leelavati which is called Kriya Kramakari. So, while he discusses the cyclic quadrilateral, so after doing that, so he presents, so we, we just uh, recall this, so sin of C into sin of D is this. So, this is written as jya samvarga is equal to this. So, let us keep this so in more familiar form. So, if we put theta 1 is n plus 1 into theta and theta 2 is equal to n minus 1 into theta in the above equation, then it readily simplifies into this form. So, sin of n plus 1 into theta. So, if you look at this equation, so if you know the previous value, then you will be able to immediately get the next value of the sign. So, asya upayogaha, so that is what he says in constructing the sign table. Okay. So, this is one way of doing, and uh, this has been stated in this verse by Shankara Varyar. See, tattajya vargam. So, tattajya refers to some sign of n theta. So, tattajya, so that particular ja. Varga is square, 
तो तत्जावर्गम आद्यजावर्गहनम सो हीनम इज रिमूव सो तत्जावर्गम आद्यजावर्गहनम हरेत हरेत मीन्स यू डिवाइड डिवाइड बै वाट हाँ मिस्टेक आस आसन्न अधस्थ शिंजिन्या सो अधस्थ शिंजिन्या शिंजिनी आल्सो रेफर्स टू दिस जा अधस्था मीन्स वन बिलो दिस सो इफ यू कंसिडर एन साइन ऑफ एन थीटा सो एन माइनस वन टाइम्स थीटा सो इज दि सो सो दट विल बी दि डिवैसर एंड वाट यू गेट इज लब्धा सैत उत्तरोत्तरा सो यू बेसिक गेट दि सक्सिव जा सो इफ यू नो दि वैल्यू ऑफ sin theta then you will be able to get the entire sin table constructed using this okay so cyclic quadrilateral <laughs> in fact yesterday someone was asking so what do you mean by third diagonal of a cyclic quadrilateral after all when you have a four sided figure you can have two diagonals so we'll introduce that now so a b c d is the cyclic quadrilateral and uh, so as before so we'll uh, have this ab is the first side which i will denote as j1 so bc is j2 so cd is j3 and this is a da is j4 so the corresponding chords so these are the sorry these are the arcs sorry a b c d uh, these are all basically the jaws they are the chords say form the segments of the cyclic quadrilateral so the arcs a b b c c d and uh, they are denoted as c1 c2 c3 c4 the chapas and uh, d b is a diagonal a c is a diagonal so these two diagonals we denote as K one and K two. Fine. Now, I choose a point G such that BC is equal to AG. I choose the point G such that the arc length BC is equal to arc length AG. so which basically amounts to swapping two sides so you this b is transported to this point so if you move this b to this then basically the segments the length of the segment will interchange right so in doing this so suppose you think of a g instead of b so a g c and d this will be the new quadrilateral but this is basically of the same area so this will not have anything different so all that we have done is swapping in fact the expression for area of the quadrilateral will be in terms of this diagonals so diagonals we denote as k1 k2 k3 any kind of swapping can be done any segment can be swapped so you can think of transporting this to other side other to this side so you do anything so one diagonal will remain invariant the other diagonal will change so this third diagonal will be referred to as bhavikarna in the text right so this dg that you obtain is the third diagonal so by changing interchanging the sides so either you swap or you just take it up opposite whatever you do so whatever you get is the third diagonal and this is generally referred to as bhavi karna so the karnas k1 k2 and k3 are referred to as one is ishta karna so other is itara karna and then the third is called bhavi karna any kind of change that you do so you will get this diagonal as the third diagonal the length will be the same so this much has to be clear now ha huh? हाँ भावी करना इसी नाम है तस्त सो सो वेन यू इन इंटरचेंज द साइड्स सो वन डायगनल विल बी इन वेरियंट द अदर डायगनल दैट यू गेट इज भावी 
bhavi means that will come. So, it will come in the sense of after interchange, whatever you get is what is referred to as bhavi karna. Fine. So, the result that we are going to prove is just summarized in this slide. So, I am I will start working on the board in fact. So, ishta karna is the chosen diagonal or you can call it first diagonal. So, itara karna you call it second diagonal. So, given a certain quadrilateral figure and uh, the third which is obtained by swapping the sides is referred to as bhavi karna. So, so what are we going to prove? So, in fact, this has been nicely stated. So, ishta karna into bhavi karna. So, is ishta karna ashrita bhuja ghataikyam. As you can see in the right hand side, what you got is the product of two karnas, the product of two diagonals. In the left hand side is karna ashrita. So, given a certain karna, see you can imagine this way. So, suppose I choose this diagonal d b. So, the end points of this karna are tagged to two segments. So, this end point to two, the other end point to other two. So, what it says is, so ishta karna ashrita bhuja ghata aikyam. So, bhuja is side, ghata is product, aikyam is sum. So, in this diagram, so what does it mean? So, d b is ishta karna, so which we call it as k 1 denote. So, this karna shrita bhujas or a b. So, a b and b c are the bhujas sides attached to one end of this karna. The other two are a d and C D are the other two sides attached to K 1. So, all that it says is ishta karna ashrita bhuja ghata ikyam. So, is J 1 J 2. So, bhuja ghata is product. and j3, j4 the sum of them. So, karna ashrita bhuja ghata, so both of them i k m is add. So, this is equal to k 1 into k 3. So, that is this is ishta karna and this is bhavi karna. So, what you see is, so the product of two karnas have been expressed as the sum of the product of the sides. So, ishta karna ashrita bhuja ghata ikyam. So, <coughs> is ishta karna into bhavi karna. So, similarly, itara karna ashrita bhuja ghata ikyam will be itara karna into bhavi karna. So, if you look at this diagram, so itara karna is A C. So, so A C A C is itara karna. So, there the product is so J1 J4 plus J2 j 3 and this will be equal to k 2 into k 3. So, you can easily write the third one. So, it is bhuja prati bhuja ghata ikyam. So, take the opposite side. So, j 1 j 3 plus j 2 j 4. So, this is k 1 times k 2. 
So, these are the three results that we will be very quickly deriving now. So, this is what is stated. The overall principle is, so if you think of these two equations, so you can take a product of these two and then you will be able to see that you get k 1 square and k 1 square into k 2 k 3 will be there. So, k 2 k 3 you can once again express in terms of the sides. So, you will be able to get expression for each of these Carnot's purely in terms of the sides of the cyclic quadrilateral. So, they prove it very simple uh, nice proof and this proof is just based on the two relations which I stated before. So, I will just work it out. So, let us see this relation. So, J 1, J 2 J of C 1 plus C 2 by 2 the whole square minus J of C 1 minus C 2 by 2. So, this is one relation and similarly, so I write J 3, J 4 j of c 3 plus c 4 by 2 so the text actually said the sum of the products of the jaws is equal to the product of the karnas so this is what we have to just prove So, let us have the diagram in front of us. If you look at this, so what you are basically looking at is this section. So, this A D is uh, J 4 and uh, A B is J 1. Okay. You consider the triangle H A I. I will explain what this points I and H are. This point I is chosen such that, so it is at the center of G B. So, which essentially means this point I is basically the center point of the two arcs, so C 1 and C 2. Right. Similarly, on the other side you choose point H such that it is the center of this A D C. So, you divide this into the two things. So, cut, cut across this diagonal A C. So, the center point is A I and the center point is H. So, this center essentially means, so A I is equal to C 1 plus C 2 by 2. So, similarly A H is equal to C 3 plus C 4 by 2. So, this is clear now. Now, consider this triangle. So, obviously, H i is going to be the diameter. So, since the center of this point and the center of this is chosen, any line drawn is going to be the so diameter of this circle. So, this H i passes through the center of this circle. Now, consider the triangle H a i h a square plus a i square is obviously this is that. So, consider before I add this I just wanted to have this result in place. So, that you can just see immediately what we want to have consider the triangle h a i. So, we have H A square plus A I square is equal to uh, H I square which is equal to D square.
So, what is this H A and what A I are? So, H A so can be written as J of uh, C 3 plus C 4 plus J of C 1 plus C 2 by 2 the whole square this is equal to d square. So, now we have these two expressions wherein this occurs right. So, when I add these two, so this is 1 and this is 2 and this is 3. So, using 3 in 1 and 2, so we have j 1 j 2 plus j 3 j 4 is equal to d square minus j of c 3 minus c 4 by 2 minus j of c 1 minus c 2 Hmm. Now, we are going to consider one more triangle. So, we are going to express so d square so minus this. So, I want to sort of eliminate. So, that is why I am just going to use this. So, d square minus the difference in the jaw C 3 C 4. Uh, you let us consider this triangle H D I h d i. Okay. So, this is obviously a right angle triangle. So, what is h d? h d is j of c 3 minus c 4. So, this is a h is sum of this and d h is the difference of the arcs. So, c 3 minus c 4 by 2 the j. So, this if you consider the triangle h d i obviously, it is a right angle triangle. So, this d square minus j of c 3 minus c 4 square. So, that is going to be d i square. So, this gets eliminated. So, these two, so they get eliminated with d i square and uh, this j of c 1 minus c 2. So, this can be conceived of g i square. So, we have j 1 j 2 plus j 3 j 4 is equal to d i square minus that is all we have more or less proved. So, now you invoke the other nyaya. See, we have j 1 square minus j 2 square. So, they are basically cards. So, d i and uh, g i are basically cards. So, all that it says is the difference in the card square can be expressed as the sum a product of two jaws which actually sum up the arcs, right. So, I will just write it as so j of d i plus g i into j of d i minus g i. So, once again we will go to the figure. So, d i plus g i. So, d i plus g i. So, this g i is same as b i that is the midpoint and therefore, what I have is so the j corresponding to the arc so d i plus b i. So, which is nothing but d b. So, which is one of the diagonals k 2. So, this is k 2 and you can see what the other is going to be. <laughs> so, this is d i minus g i. So, this is basically d g which is the third karna 
भावी करना K3 so that thus you have seen that the sum of the product of the sides so is basically the product of the diagonals so this will be true of all other karnas so and therefore so we have shown this particular case ishta karna into bhavi karna is this karna shita and one can show that in a similar way that this is going to be the, the product of the other sides so itara karna shita bhuja ghatikam will be k1 times so this is k2 itara karna into bhavi karna k3 fine so we can just write it down and so itara karna so in the diagram so itara karna is ac so this bhuja ghatikam so this is going to be j1 and j2 huh? so this so for this karna at the point a these two are tied up and here these two are tied up so it is j1 j4 plus j2 j3 so j1 j4 plus j2 j3 is equal to and this is so this will be so itara karna ashrita bhuja ghataikyam so i think this this should be k1 so i made a mistake so this is k2 into k3 so that was basically k1 so k1 so this is k2 into k3 so you can see so once you have this so then so if you take a product of these two you get uh, k3 square and k1 k2 you have an expression so you will be able to get all the uh, products so each of these karnas can be expressed in terms of the jas so sides of the cyclic quadrilateral now the other result so so making use of them we express the diagonals purely in terms of the sides then so we can express the area of the cyclic quadrilateral also in terms of karnas so karnas can be expressed in terms of sides so and areas can be expressed in terms of karna so which itself so you can see that the expression for area can also be expressed in terms of the sides of this quadrilateral this is also nicely proved so the area of this cyclic quadrilateral can be conceived of as the sum of the areas of the two triangles dab and bcd so this is uh, half times so area of the quadrilateral is equal to area of triangle a uh, so dab plus area of triangle so dc dcb yeah so this is so half times uh, so db so is k1 okay so that is karna 1 so half times base into height so height is the perpendicular to be dropped from so suppose there is a point so so you drop a perpendicular from this point and let this meet at say m okay so so this is so am where m is the foot of the perpendicular on k1 and uh, plus half times again k1 into suppose you drop a perpendicular from c to ab k1 so let it be n okay so cn cn so this is what we have so this is half of k1 into am plus cn so this am so is so this result 
So, we know that the product of the sides of the triangle, so divided by the circum diameter gives the altitude. So, A m and B n are basically the altitudes and we use this result. So, the product of these two sides, so in, the, in this case, so suppose you had dropped a perpendicular from A to M, so the two sides are, so J 1 and J 4. So, this is half K K 1 into, so J 1 J 4 by D plus the other two, so J 2 J 3 by D. So, this is half 1 by 2 D times, see J 1 J 2 and J 2 J 3, so J 1 J 2 and J 2 J 3. Uh, so, this are you right? So, uh, sorry, A m, A m is this no, J 1 J 4, this should be. So, this should be, so J 1 J 4 and J 2 J 3. Hmm? So, this J 1 J 4, so this is itara karna, so itara karna seta, so this is itara karna and uh, so therefore, what you will have is, so this is basically, so k 1, k 2 into k 3. So, this will be j 1, j 4 plus j 2, j 3 is k 2 into k 3. So, therefore, area is the product of the 3 diagonals divided by the circum diameter of the cyclic quadrilateral. These are interesting results that have been presented, so in a very simple manner and this is just obtained from the two nyayas. So, one is the product of the jas and the other is the difference of the squares. So, this is in terms of the cyclic quadrilateral. And uh, there is also other discussion on uh, this uh, formula, so root of s minus a into s minus b s minus c that is also discussed in this yukti bhasha which has been discussed in other texts also. So, thank you. So, with this you can